do my best to uh, kind of explain the roadway preferences. Um, some of these are our preferences that were used with the original roadway modeler tool. Um, we've added some preferences to handle the networks and, and do some intersection design and the cul-de-sacs. So you can see here we start off with the comp section and what comp section we want to use. And you can view the comp section from here. You can make changes to it from here. It just brings up the comp section dialog, make your changes, uh, save them off as such. Uh, plans production files with the CCH files used by the tabular data tool. Uh, again, you can choose a file. You can change, set the scale, uh, but to make changes to that CCH file, you would do that in the profile tabular data tool. Vertical. Uh, first option here is the surfaces where we want to drape the existing ground on the model. In this case, as we're doing a roadway, we'll drape the existing ground onto the model surface at that particular time. So as you can see here in a particular profile, it drapes it on the existing ground and then it uh, that establishes the existing ground profile or existing surface profile and drawn as such. The proposed profile is uh, created and then the drawn with that particular feature, in this case the, the purple line, uh, with its particular scale. Uh, we can add additional plan view elements here. If we want to search and draw those in profile, we can set up to search and scan horizontally left to right of, this, of the main alignment element and locate those elements and then drape them on the model or object surface and uh, then represent those in profile and some symbology. As for the vertical design, uh, again we can kind of do a first pass design. As you see here, the purple element is representing our first pass of the design for the for the side street. And that was uh, part of the thing we can add to the profile. You can see there's a blue, yellow, and green elements there. Uh, as we can scan for the property lines, in this case the yellow right away, or block, lot, block lines, uh, give it a scan distance. And then the ones we find to the left, we'll plot in the existing Pro L feature. Or again, you can also designate a symbology. Um, the right side, we'll, we'll plot in a different feature. Uh, you can vertically offset those if you need to from, from the center line. And then those could be used as a uh, kind of a use those to kind of design the uh, roadway profile when we go through and do the profile. Or you can just do a best fit and the best fit would just kind of follow the uh, existing ground as best it could. So the minimum composite from property boundary would use the graphics created by the property boundary section and it would try to do a, 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 a kind of a, a minimum composite between those. Some other things that, that get taken into account with the profile not only are the, the property boundary but also when we get to roadway connections and if the roadway is connecting with another roadway there's some, some design constraints there as well. Uh, for the main road, the, the, the design constraints here are uh, set by vertical curve length, so you can have a desired vertical curve length and then an absolute minimum not to go below that. And um, in this case, uh, when we run through the roadway modeler tool and, and we want to edit the profile, we will be using the vertical alignment generator as our design tool to make changes to that profile. So at that step in the roadway modeler tool, when prompted to edit a profile and, and choosing yes, you will uh, have the vertical alignment generator pop up versus the vertical component tool palette.
the roadway connections. Those are uh, where two roadways come together. Um, we want to set up some information as far as how to tie the two roads together. Um, here we're going to match the grade to the intersection of the roads and uh, we're going to uh, kind of use a vertical curve length here of 60 so for example in this particular one you can see here if I can zoom in enough is uh, you know a vertical curve here's the VPC and the VPT so we've got a 60 foot vertical curve in there um, the rest of them will be 80 based on the vertical design preference along that roadway the rest of the vertical cars will be you know at the least 80 so we have uh, the ability to connect to the road uh, tying the profiles to the road tying the profiles to the um, roadway object matching the grade setting the vertical curve length for the rope for the little intersection between the roads and a clear distance from the vertical uh, the VPC point which will be uh, in this case five five feet and then also when doing an intersection include you know setting up a, a pavement seam line in our case this little join line so searching for that element and then including that element in both objects, which is typical when doing uh, typical when doing roadway intersections. The returns option, uh, you know, when we do do curb returns or intersections, uh, you know, set up a default search radius. Uh, so again, when you're running the network tool, you just toggle on to create the curb return. So you set the default search radius where the two roads intersect, searching out 47 feet in this case, looking for those arcs um, or the pavement edge arcs. Once you uh, find them and create the site element for them, we're adding those to the secondary object. That would be the side street versus the main line. Um, and one, also adding a comp section to those and for both the left side and the right side returns. The cul-de-sac tools, uh, we went over the cul-de-sac tool in a separate ABI, but again, this basic dialogue preferences for that tool, uh, search radius, the, the cul-de-sac marker symbology, the circle, it needs to be a circle. Um, looking for that cul-de-sac edge of pavement that we can then create a site element for it, profile it, so forth, and then push a comp section. Or also keep in mind a section as well could be pushed. And finally, we come to cross sections. That's where, uh, you know, as we, the roadway modeler, it cuts cross sections. It'll drape the uh, existing graphic you know, create that by draping onto the existing ground. Uh, the new proposed roadway graphics will be based on the new object, roadway object plus its slope. Um, it could also use a model or object, and you know, so we could use something else as well. They could both be so a separate graphic can be plotted. Um, the location of the of the cross sections. Um, and where the pattern lines are going to be drawn. So again, you have the increment or even option. Um, place them at critical points. Uh, these are very similar to the draw cross section dialog. How far left and right, the scale of the cross sections, and then of course the pattern line symbology. So existing ground will be drawn in a existing ground feature or certain symbology. The roadway object proposed will be drawn in a certain um, symbology and if we decide to draw something other than the roadway object we can set that up as well and, and then the break line text and then a tabular data preference file if so desired can be 
set up and used as well. All these can be saved off. They're saved off as an SRP, a roadway preference file, site roadway preference file, and recalled again and again. So I can, we can open up different ones. And use those and these again are, are also this is the same preference file that's used on the roadway network dialog and used for those particular roads that we're creating there so again just uh, preferences for processing each individual roadway whether you're using the roadway tool or the roadway network tool um, as you step through a particular project it will have things filled out based on your preferences so for example as I step through the main road that I created And for example, under vertical design, I've chosen vertical alignment generator. So when I click on the vertical design tools, it will bring up vertical alignment generator. If I were to add additional profile elements, that would be that dialog will be populated from the additional profile elements group box here on the roadway preferences dialog or I can override it at this stage in the actual tool itself. The profile annotation, again coming from the preferences and being passed over to the particular tool that I'm in. I don't know if that uh, covers all the preferences to the satis to your satisfaction, but um, any questions we can further clarify, especially maybe the best fit options and uh, and how to how the roadway connects.